right, what's going on everyone? This is Ben, Alex, Reese, Dan from the Friendly Neighborhood Fanboys, and our boy, Aaron, Caboose. Hi, Caboose. Big shout outs, thanks for joining us so hey, last minute. We got a lot to talk about today. We're in the, we're in the trenches, man. Yeah, bro. Let's let's just let's throw it let's throw it to you quick because I know you have also been battling with people on Twitter and uh, in the comments. Yeah. So, what what are your just your your first hot takes here, bro? Um, so okay, I think for me, this is this is so tough because like we're talking about something like a film about the Authority, which I mean I've never heard of in my life. Okay, an animated show about the Creature Commandos, which like I mean I'm sure dozens of people are like super excited about that like if not it's it's in the tens of 20s okay <laughs> <laughs> cannot, cannot wait for like the creature commandos but like for me like those projects will probably be good you know like i i think like it's james gunn is an exceptional writer like he knows his stuff and Anytime he has talked good about a movie, whether it's how him saying the Suicide Squad was like his best movie or all the love that he shows for his Guardian stuff, like, I think he usually makes good stuff. You mm -hmm. know, so like, I think the, the Authority is going to come out and probably be a good movie. That The Creature Commandos will come out and probably be an interesting animated series. Yeah. You know? But I want whatever this first slate of projects to be, to be strictly about lanterns, about. Paradise Lost. Yes. <laughs> about Batman and Robin, Superman Legacy, and then obviously they're gonna have some plans, hopefully at least, for Aquaman going forward. They should have had something announced for Martian Manhunter. Yeah, that's what I this, was saying. This, yeah. first, this first introduction, it should have been yes, clearly we are building up to the Justice League. Not Oh yeah, and we're we're probably gonna do an Aquaman trilogy with Jason Momoa. Yeah. So you know we'll we'll see what happens after Aquaman two. It's like wait what what yeah. or or you no know, yeah we're gonna make an Amanda Waller show with characters from Peacemaker. Even though in Peacemaker we saw all the DC <laughs> Justice League show up. Uh. It's like hold on. So we already know that the Batman is an Elseworlds story, and it deserves that right yes. it is that good absolutely right? it, it is earned a seat at the table to be to have a continuation but not be connected to the dcu and is still getting a dcu batman but i'm sorry i love the suicide squad i love peacemaker i thought that i was a great show it really won me over but i don't want to see more from the dceu yeah. it's either you hit the hard reset button or you don't. Yes. And if we can have the Flash movie come out featuring Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton's Batman, and then also have the Batman Part 2 in two years, which has Robert Pattinson's Batman, and then also have a DCU Batman, which will make four on-screen <laughs> Batmans in maybe three years, but we can't have Henry Cavill's Superman coinciding with whatever the DCU Superman is, then what is the plan? Yeah, it's like, it just you seems know? like they, he's doing his best to present it as like, we have this grand scheme of a plan that's going to be very cohesive. And it's like that, you know, everything's going to be consistent, but it's like, he started off saying we want consistency with actors all the way through, but it's inconsistent in that we're doing a hard reboot, but I'm picking and choosing what I want to remain from the previous aspect into this new DCU, which doesn't make any sense because it's like it's like you said, if we're gonna have a reboot, do a hard reboot. Like the flash, like doing the flashpoint is a perfect way to reboot things. Exactly. Why lead with Aquaman two after doing the hard reboot? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. at that point, it should have just come either before or somebody in our comments actually made a great point that you know it could run coinciding with the flashpoint kind of like an ant-man and the wasp kind of thing where it's like at the end of aquaman mm -hmm. 2 but it's like he's already come out and said oh you know like we envisioned uh or jason envisioned being aquaman trilogy it's like he's only gonna play one one character in the new dcu it's like well how can we how can we pick and choose how's an actor deciding yeah the, <laughs> okay a few things yeah. a how did jason get so much creative control all of a sudden i love him playing the character but like Come on, like you're supposed to be the producers and the directors and you know the, the CEO or whatever the fuck you are here. Like, make yeah. a call if you're gonna reboot the universe. Reboot the whole fucking universe. 
exactly. This is the tough part, right? Because, and, and this is why I, I wonder how much of it has to do with James Gunn and Peter Safran and how much of it is David Zaslav being like, hey, this is what makes us the money. Because Jason Momoa's Aquaman is the highest grossing film in the DCEU. It made over a billion dollars. And them strategically moving Aquaman 2 away from Avatar is because they're expecting a potential billion dollar hit again yep. with the sequel. And if the second movie is just as fun, is just an, just as like a, another pop, like throw popcorn in your face kind of movie, it very well might make another billion dollars, you know? And so obviously in their mind, they're like, ah, oh, like, do we let go of this franchise and not do a third one that can also make another billion dollars? But again, then sometimes you just got to make the tough decisions. You got to make the tough calls because if you're going to keep going with a character that is from an established connected universe that you are now getting rid of, it's going to be too confusing for audiences. I don't think audiences are dumb enough to under, not understand that Robert Pattinson's Batman and the DCU Batman are going to be different. I don't think they're stupid to the point where they're going to be like, oh, what's going on? Yeah. But yeah. they're going to be confused when you have two potential continuities coinciding with each other and happening at the same time. Like, what is the next Aquaman building to? Because we saw apparently that Ben Affleck might be in it. That, that was so, another thing I was saying. <laughs> Why? What? What is that? What is that going to mean? It's like why have them reshoot it and then axe it again? Because like at this point, it makes more sense for them to axe the reshoots with Affleck in Aquaman too. But it's like, yeah. <laughs> how much money are we going to spend on like? Okay, well we're going to do that. We're going to know. Oh yeah, let's get rid of this now. And then yeah. it's, it's just so it's back and forth, and it just it's like you said. What what's the point of having? You know, we're going to axe an existing continuity, but still keep the continuity from previous, from, from, or keep the characters from the previous continuity. Yeah. And, it doesn't. And like, to, to me, it's like, okay, maybe the case is that they just don't want to say anything about whatever their DCU Aquaman or their DCU Flash is going to be because people, they want people to go see these movies. Like, this is now under the, the WBD regime. They, they need to get people to go to the theaters. They want people to think like, well, I guess I'm not going to give a shit about the Flash if yeah. they didn't already think that already, considering the controversy. But they don't want to think like I don't care about Aquaman if the Flash is just going to reset everything. So clearly, yeah, they want people to go see them. But in that case, don't even bring them up during this presentation. Just talk about the new shit. Yeah. Literally, just talk about the new shit. Hundred percent. We already know Shazam is coming. Okay, we already know that's on the way. We already know the Flash is coming. It's going to get its first trailer at the Super Bowl. Aquaman 2 is going to get its whole marketing campaign, and that's what's going to push people to go see the movie. Bringing it up and talking about its potential importance did nothing but confuse people. And if all that they did today was say, we have a new Superman movie, a Lantern show, Paradise Lost, a new Batman and Robin movie, this and that and the other, and then not bring up anything DCEU, then... That's it. Like whenever those movies marketing campaigns start and people go, they go and they see those movies and that's it. Like they, they'll enjoy them. Maybe they'll make some money and then you can go ahead and reboot your universe, which is what should be happening. And what I hope is still technically what's happening. I think it is too, because Dan and I were talking earlier and it's like the, the wording from that particular interview, I don't know what trade it was in, but he basically was like, you know, Jason, in Jason's mind, it was always a trilogy uh, and he's only playing one character in the DCU, uh, but like he also does want to play Lobo. There was kind of like that little yeah. like, like you know. Yeah. Why shift. even bring up Lobo? So he's right? like, <laughs> and then I, you know, I'm just I'm paraphrasing here, but like he, he said something like, uh, so we'll see what happens or like what ends up being decided. So to me, it's like, that why, means, why even bring that up though? Well, it's not I know even <laughs> either I I hate it regardless. Like mm -hmm. I hate the way they're handling this, but. To me, that means it's like, let's see how Aquaman 2 does before we decide if we're going to just can him and pretend he's not a part of this new universe or not. <laughs> like, that, that is what I get from that. Because then it's like, okay, you know, maybe the reception of Aquaman 2 is poor or people are disappointed that, you know, this universe going forward is going to be confusing. Then they're like, okay, fuck it. We're going to get a new Aquaman down the line, but we'll get Jason to do Lobo in the universe. So, you know, all parties are happy. Let's all shake hands and be merry. What I don't agree with, like you were saying, Aaron, is like, yeah, you have all these Peacemaker fucking people and Amanda Waller coming back. Yeah, like, Viola that's Davis why taking Amanda Waller. Again. Yeah, people in, in our comments are tearing us apart. Like, oh, can't okay, you be happy with like all these side characters getting their stuff? It's like, no, uh, no, I can't, <laughs> I, I can't because 
because I like we, we if it's a reboot, we want to see a reboot. Like, don't just cherry pick, and it's all his characters. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he's that's, like that's that's what's BS, man. It's just like it's like his nepotism babies. Yeah, and he's like, well, I made this movie, and it's so good, and I made Peacemaker. I want to continue with those guys. It's like. So you want to continue with the characters that you got to work on in the established DCEU, but you can't, but you're going to reboot everything else. And that is exactly, <laughs> that is, yeah. that is exactly what I said, what we all said when we reacted to the news that it was James Gunn that was going to be the head of the DCU. Like we, we like, honestly, I wasn't surprised by all that. I, I called it from like a mile away. Um, I wasn't here when you guys did the reaction. I was uh, I was out of, I was out of town, so I couldn't actually film it with you guys. Um, and there's a few things like that I'm really really excited for that they announced. And I just have a my only quarrel is uh, James Gunn in uh, being involved in the uh, in the Superman movie, like the animated show. What's what was it called? Sorry. The uh, what, what, what? The, a the first one. The, the first creature one? commandos. Creature yeah. commandos. <laughs> creature yeah. command. Creature commandos. Um, you know what? Here's what I think they're trying to do too with that is after 2023, they have nothing coming out until like 2025. So they're going to have an entire year that they're not going to be releasing mm -hmm. anything and Marvel's going to be releasing stuff steady. So they already know that, right? So they're like, okay, I guess the, really the only thing that they really can do in time is an animated series. So Creature Commandos, like, that's totally fine. Like, I don't care, but like, that's, it's fine. <laughs> they got to get stuff going. And Amanda Waller show, I completely agree with you guys uh, with what you said there. That's just absolute bullshit. Like, I don't care. Like, Amanda Waller is a character that should be introduced after, like, the main heroes are introduced yeah. because, like, the whole idea of her character is she's only there because of all of the other heroes that are around. Yeah. So, like, if you don't have any of the heroes around yet and Amanda Waller is, like, the first in line, doesn't really make sense to me also like i don't know whatever i don't like that kind of side or i think like that i think our frustration right. is like that's where like kind of like our most of the controversy from what we say or like what people get the most upset about is that we're upset about the things that are being carried over when it should be a full reboot because there yeah. were some things that were announced in the slate that are genuinely really exciting yep. yeah like i'm pumped yep. about lanterns i think i've been wanting to see Hell a yeah. lantern forever yeah, yeah. like yep. but, uh, like since the ryan reynolds project so i'm very excited about that the swamp it. thing that's gonna be i'm really intrigued about that's yeah. gonna be a horror like, can, can we actually i have it pulled up my on my phone my notes can we actually go through everything real quick that was just announced just like a yeah. summary yeah. like the, the so, actual slate itself outside of the stuff that's carrying over i'm intrigued about and i'm willing to give a chance it's not that that's you know like sure it's like there's some upsetting stuff like, or not upsetting but it's like okay well is that really the priority we're taking? Kind of, but, like, yeah. forget about that. But it's just about the things that are being carried over and the lack of consistency there. It's just, like, reboot or don't reboot. That's 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 yeah. all it like, comes down to. Yep. Like, I feel like a lot of those decisions, I don't think... Like, in terms of what to do with the movies that are coming out in 2023, honestly, in my head... I, I'm reborn, guys. I've turned over a new <laughs> movie. I feel like I've been reborn. Because, honestly, going into this year... I'm going to watch Shazam. I'm going to watch, uh, what's the other one? Um, the Flash. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, I'm going to watch Shazam. I'm going to watch The Flash. Um, Aquaman is supposed to be funnier than the first, so I can't wait to see that. Um, but basically at this point, I'm, I'm not, in my head, I've made peace with the fact that, you know what, that's fine. I'm going to take the movies for how they are. Not every movie that we watch needs to be uh, into a connected universe, right? Like, I agree. I don't, I don't think. So, it, you know, they still got to make them. They can't take losses on those movies, whatever. The James Gunn nepotism, though, is another thing going into, like, the beginning of this slate. Because, honestly, like... That's the frustrating I, part out of all of it. And that's what brings me... I wanted to quickly go through because he announced uh, Superman Legacy. But before we go into that, um, Aaron, what were you uh, going to say there? I mean, I was just going to speak on something like... Like, my intrigue for the project, like, the Paradise Lost project, is that... That that is how you make your cake and have it too. Yeah. You want to reboot but still do some Wonder Woman shit? Yes. I think yeah. it's such a good idea because they can then just take their time. Like we they, they know. They know that like Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman's pretty iconic and a lot of people consider her to be their Wonder Woman. And so immediately recasting might not be the greatest idea to go forward with. Like Superman, I think like I've come to terms with Superman because it's just such an important character it is the most iconic dc hero you have to like there's got to be another superman movie 
ASAP, right? But with Paradise Lost, I think it's so interesting because they're doing this like this Themyscira thing, this like Game of Thrones style show. Oh, great move. Get everybody to like have, yeah, like have it in their mind, the world of Wonder Woman. And then in like three, four years or however long, then recast Wonder Woman. Here's your new Wonder Woman. She comes in like season three of the show or some shit, you know, like something like that. I think is a really interesting idea. Lanterns, like you said, looks fantastic. Like there's a lot of really good sounding projects in the lineup. No doubt about it. But did Marvel? I don't know about you guys. Did Marvel announce Guardians of the Galaxy in their phase one? Because for me, they were down to experiment when they knew they had something. When yeah. they knew, like, okay, yeah. we got our Avengers out of the way. Let's try something new, you know? And we don't, they didn't even have to, like, immediately make it so, like, this is going to be a part of the big universe. You know, they didn't even try to hint that, like, the Guardians were going to meet the Avengers at one point. And it wasn't even until long after Guardians 2 that that was something that was in our minds. You know, it was yeah. just that they made the Guardians, they experimented, they had fun with it, and it worked out. Like, it worked out really well for them. And now Guardians is a household name because of it. You know, and this whole phase, the recent phase of Marvel, is nothing but experimental for the exact reason that I just mentioned. They got their big 22-21 movie arc out of the way. They did it. And, and it'll never be forgotten. Everyone's always, could for the rest of their lives, it'll be looked at as one of the biggest achievements in Hollywood that Kevin Feige and co. made 21 movies that were all interconnected and built to one of the biggest movies of all time in Avengers Endgame. So now they're just, they're like, screw it. Like, we'll put out like some stupid shit like She-Hulk. Like, okay, maybe it's going to be a hit or miss, but we're trying new things. You know, like they're going to put out something like Miss Marvel. They're going to put out something like Moon Knight. And all these things are going to be different because they're just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks because they have the ability to do so and they have the brand recognition and the brand reputation to do so. DC, DC been fighting, okay, <laughs> for a very long time. Say the least. They've been fighting. We here love the Zack Snyder stuff. Like, we all geek out about Man of Steel, about Batman vs. Superman, about Zack Snyder's Just League, but we would be silly to not admit that they are extremely divisive. You know, 1, and because of that, 100%. the brand of DC has taken such a huge hit. And movies like The Suicide Squad that get rave reviews, that pretty much top to bottom everyone says is fantastic, Degree. barely cracks $200 million. It's the reason why The Rock stars in a DC movie and it doesn't make $400 million, but Eternals does. Like, DC just doesn't have the power right now. So the authority being amongst their first announced projects <laughs> is just worrisome yeah. to me because it sounds like they just want to do like weird, obscure shit yeah. before yes. they get together 100%. the Justice League. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. <laughs> and with, with him saying that, let's just quickly run through the movies that were announced and the shows that were announced and kind of go it. around the room. Let's do it. So the first one is going to be Superman Legacy. Um... Superman Legacy, honestly, like that is, uh, like that's great. I always want like a Superman movie. You, you need to have a Superman movie early on, like to you know jumpstart the universe. Um, my only quarrel with this is I never want to see James Gunn touch a Superman script in my entire life. <laughs> that's it, though. That's the only. Quarrel. I per, I don't. That's the I, biggest part of the film. <laughs> here, here's the thing. I don't like his style of writing at all. Uh, I don't like, uh, like, you know, Guardians is okay. I didn't, like, you know, I have to disagree with you on the Suicide Squad and stuff. I don't like his style of writing. And mm. this, like, the fact that he's writing the script for a Superman movie actually scares me, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't like his style. I don't like how he tries to inject that humor and everything. Like, Peacemaker was good for what it was, but that kind of style of humor is more, like, it's not really character humor, which is what I think lands the best. Mm -hmm. It was that Marvel mm -hmm. gag kind of humor that I just don't like and doesn't fit as much well with this universe. Remember when uh, it was rumored that Tal Nahasi Coates was supposed to write a Superman script? Mm -hmm. What happened to right. that? Get him on this. Like, why is James Gunn writing this? Anyways, <laughs> that's what I have to say about that. Honestly, like, I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with Superman Legacy. I just don't want James Gunn to write a script ever. Um, pers <laughs> personally. Ever. I'm sorry. Ever. I'm sorry to say, Caboose. I'm sorry, but, like, that's just my personal opinion. Um, no, that's fair. That's fair enough. The authority, again, like you just said, um, don't care. They're C they're not even B characters. They're C characters. Their existence, like, you know how, like, they have a different way of looking at justice. Like, 
that's all fine and good or whatever. But this early on, like, I don't know why the authority, like, you know, he's trying to do a Guardians way too early. Just right? like going off of the dozens other, of though, like, people are excited. The way he worded it though was that like. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> dozens of people. Yeah, dozens. dozens yeah, of yeah people. literally. literally. Like, like, listen, like as a, a like, baker's dozen of like people. as a <laughs> as a comic book fan, like I read them like all the time. Like I'm I'm pretty well familiar with like the different iterations of the Authority. Um, but they're not that they're, important. He said they're going to be interacting <laughs> right. with like the regular members of the Justice League regularly. Which is not universe. formed yet. We don't have a Justice League yet. yet. Who are they interacting with? Yeah. It's just like yeah. it's the faceless people he put in <laughs> Peacemaker. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, there was that. Um, the Batman Brave and the Bold. I'm glad I didn't do the reaction with you guys because my knee jerk instinctual reaction was to be like, no, fuck that shit. Having a Robin in there. However, <laughs> now that I've now that I've had time to sit on it. I'm like, you know what? We've seen the regular Batman be done like in different ways. The regular Batman is going on even right now. So having Batman deal with, uh, you know, trying to be a father is something we haven't really seen since like the Kilmer, Clooney kind of movie. So honestly, I'm actually totally open to that, um, uh, to that side of the character exploration. So mm -hmm. that actually, and he wants to go off of, they're trying to base it off of the Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly um, book, which is like right here. Which is honestly a great oh. story. Um, Are you a fan of the comics, by any chance? Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Uh, yes, he is. To people, to people yeah. who are yeah. comics. Yeah, we don't know the source material. To, yeah. uh, <laughs> to people watching this, like, I hate being that guy that's always like, well, in the comics, but that's what's most dear to me. Um, well, actually, we got called out for not knowing the comics. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That so was anyways, a comment today. Yeah. This is, for everyone watching, this is the book that they apparently want to base it off of. Um, they got to change it up a little bit because in this particular story, it's actually Dick Grayson acting as Batman and not Batman. So, you know. But again, that whole father-son dynamic is going to be really cool. Um, that also opens the door for uh, Ben Affleck to get recast. So anyways. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're, doing an old, you're doing an old Bruce Wayne. It's like, like just, oh, just, just, age, just like age-wise. Like who would be better they're than picking fucking... the worst Robin. They're uh, like... No, listen, listen, they're, not they're, not they're not though. They're not though. They're not though. They are. Aaron. They are. Aaron, Tim, Tim don't, Drake don't. is technically the most boring Robin to do for that. <laughs> Damien, like I okay, said, it's his that's actual... That's fair. Would you not agree that if they're going to go with an edgy Robin to, to juxtapose Batman to be someone that Batman needs to raise and has difficulty doing so, is Jason Todd not the perfect candidate? I mean, I have my own opinions about the character of Jason Todd, um, <laughs> but like, I, think I, Jason Todd is I, know what, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. But the thing is, Jason Todd is not like Batman's actual genetic spawn. You know what I mean? Like not his actual But they're child. they're all his sons at the end of the day. That's the story, they right? Are, these are his adopted children. They are. Yeah. But especially over the past 10 years on what um a lot of writers and creators have been doing between the Batman and Damian relationship, they've been taking it to very interesting places because it's an actual it's about Batman coming to terms with the fact that he had this child with Talia Al Ghul doesn't see the kid till he's like maybe 10 or 11 and he's a complete offspring like a little version of uh Ra's al ghul right yeah. and then him trying to basically reel damien in while damien uh, simultaneously being like you're like where have you been my entire life like you know he's like mm -hmm. it's an interesting relationship and i think it'll be a great basis okay. for a new batman story but i understand what you're saying about jason todd but i feel like just because jason todd is like an edgier robin who we and we know what happens he gets killed and then the resentment builds and becomes the villain like that is also and interesting the greatest batman story ever told yeah. <laughs> i think the thing with jason todd is that we, we've seen a lot of iterations of jason todd in the last 10 years too like yeah. between the video games and between the animated series and between what we got in the titans i know it's all, those are all separate things but it's like We've seen many versions of Jason Todd already, and like Jason Todd is like cool up until he becomes Red Hood, and then once he once that transformation happens, and then Red Hood happens, it's like that's when the story kind of kind of falls off for me. Versus like really, I I don't know. I just don't find Red Hood that like after... Jason Todd was only cool when he became Red Hood for me. <laughs> I mean that, and then it recontextualizes that's, that's his not what? coolness when he was Robin. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is that is fair. But, but what I'm talking about is like the death in the family storyline of like how he becomes Red Hood is very interesting. But then the actual character of Red Hood isn't that particularly I, interesting. I I just like because obviously 
what what they're going to end up trying to do at least or maybe not obviously but what i assume they're going to end up trying to do with this batman and robin story is like he will look at damien as like it's it's one of batman's failures he wasn't there for his biological son but batman's greatest failure is when he wasn't there for jason todd and jason todd died due to his negligence right like that's 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 like that's super compelling to me but i don't know again like I, I think you sold me enough on what you explained there regarding Damien and Batman. And maybe the, I just haven't caught up on the Damien stories. And I was what I've read and what I've known of Damien is when he was just kind of like an annoying little shit. So there's probably some better stuff out there that's come since. There is. And he's a relatively new character. Like this book, for example, when Damien was really kind of uh, reintroduced, um, this came out in like 09, I think it was. And uh, between mm -hmm. 09 and right now, even right now in the books, um, there's a great uh, event that's going on in DC uh, Universe that's literally about, like, the Batman and Damien, like, relationship. And it's, like, a literal, like, a mm -hmm. universe-wide uh, event, which is really cool. Just going off the Jason Todd thing, I just want to say, like, I do agree with you. Like, his death was... It broke Batman, and it stayed with him. Mm -hmm. And all the stories, if you read throughout the 90s and early 2000s or whenever Red Hood was reintroduced, that failure mm -hmm. stayed with him. And then the only, th I personally think by making him come back as Red Hood, it completely undid all of that because he's alive again. Yeah, exactly. And he's, a, you know what I mean? So like that kind of failure is kind of like the, the power of that, of his absence was undone by him coming back as Red Hood. And that's why I feel the way I feel about Red Hood. But again, we'll, we'll get to I know, I know, I, know I, I, I think that Red Hood's coming back is a part of that greatest failure because he comes back as like a stone cold killer and. It's just even more of a reflection of like Batman's like wrongdoing, you know, like and him realizing like this is what happens to somebody that I let slip away. Yes, no, you're right. You're um, right. This no, is what no, happens when I kidnap children on the street. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't kidnap. We're getting sidetracked. I know, I know, I know. He didn't kidnap. We're, we're getting sidetracked, and also Aaron's like, "Do you see the fucking helmets behind me?" <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! I don't know. Oh, shit. Yeah. Red Hood <laughs> no, honestly, that's so uh, again, bitch. it's all love. That's my own personal opinion, but I know that Red Hood does have like a really hardcore following. Yeah. Um, um, and I, I, I feel like he's just like a divisive kind of character, Fair. right? Okay, let's let's move but, on from this because yeah. this could be a whole fucking episode. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, Supergirl, yeah, yeah. Uh, Woman of Tomorrow. This is what I'm most excited about personally that was announced um, because he literally went on and was like, we're going to base it off of Woman of Tomorrow by Tom King, which I also have right here. This is the book that he's talking <laughs> about. <laughs> Dude, um, is, you read comics? Yeah, this is <laughs> the, the reason why... <laughs> The reason why I'm excited about Supergirl is because this book in particular is the best Supergirl story I have ever read. An amazing character study, super intimate story that doesn't have anything to do with anyone but Supergirl and like basically like one other character. So when Gunn was like, yeah, we're going to base Supergirl One of Tomorrow off of this specific book by Tom King, I was like, I'm sold. I can't wait. Um, get Tom King to write the goddamn script. Uh, I don't want to see James Gunn right <laughs> That's the only thing that I'll say about that. Amazing story. Perfect uh, book to be adapted into a movie. And I'm really happy for, honestly, Tom King, who actually wrote the story, um, that they're considering doing that right now. It's just, like I said, you got to make sure the script is right. So in the future, I hope they get the guy that wrote the actual fucking story to at least <laughs> consult on the script. Yes. Right? Because nice. That'd be good. it's honestly... A it's breath of fresh air, one yeah. might say. It's masterfully written. It's absolutely incredible. All right, so... And Swamp Thing. Yeah, so there's there's a bunch of other things we won't get into because this is going to go on for 16 hours, but, like, I'm happy they're doing Swamp Thing oh, because yeah. the TV show was canceled after, what was it, like, barely even a full season. And it was a it great was show. Sick. Great yeah. show. Amazing show. Yeah, so I'm glad they're doing that. It does seem, I'm going to go on some positives, it does seem like they are not, um, not, like, our locking if that's even a good way to say that, not are locking their movies because, you know, the Wonder Woman show is supposed to be akin to Game of Thrones. Like, that's obviously going to be a more mature show. Sure. Like, they're probably going yeah. to show a lot more mature things and mature themes. The Swamp Thing is described mm -hmm. as, like, a dark horror movie. That's probably going to be pretty sick. brutal. Yeah, yeah that's amazing. That. So, yeah. I, am, I am hopeful and happy. I have hope in Kryptonian on my fucking arm. <laughs> okay? That, that we're going to 
um, be receiving not just a muddied kind of Marvel-esque universe. We're going to be actually getting like more mature movies and more mature themes. I'm very happy about yeah. that. But what I want to put yeah. out to everyone is um, now that we've got a little bit of the slate, let's pick one movie that we would like to see mm -hmm. Ooh. that we haven't seen announced. Okay. Aaron, let's start with you. Uh, I mean, I said it, but um, Martian Manhunter, man, like he, I think that's a, yeah, I think around yeah, the table, pretty but universal. unanimous decision, right? Yeah, there. He's, <laughs> he's an OG Justice League, like he's a part of the core Justice League. You know what? Like, and I remember, I, I know this for a fact because I was doing my research for uh, a, like a questionnaire panel I did once, like a, at a at a Comic Con, and I remember trying to do deep research to make sure I had my facts right. There are seven core Justice League members. Martian Manhunter is one of them. And the fact that there, there, I mean, there probably is a project in the works for Martian Manhunter, I can imagine. I mean, James Gunn did say that this is only a portion of their chapter one, um, being gods and monsters. And I mean, Martian Manhunter definitely could fall under one of those monsters. Um, and so, like, I can imagine there's a project in the works, whether it's going to be an HBO Max show, uh, maybe even a game, who knows, or whatever the plan is. I hope there's something for Martian Manager that gets him out into the mainstream because he is a core Justice League member and deserves a seat at the table. So that's that's my pick. Right. Listen, I'm gonna I'm going to say Martian Manhunter as well, but I, after hearing the slate today, think he would be a great character since you know they want everything connected now, including games, which I do want to touch on as well. Um, but mm -hmm. he would be a great character to introduce in the Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart uh, Green Lantern like, show yes, that, that was, since, yeah. since it's based yeah. partially on Earth because he said it was a terrestrial-based show, but, you know, with some space cop tomfuckery, whatever. <laughs> he would be a great fucking person to introduce into that because space cops meets, you know, Detective John Jones or, you know, they come True. across Mar Martian Manhunter, you know, in a mission to Mars or Peacekeep, like something. But I really think that kind of like grounded nature of how they're kind of shaping Green Lantern would be a really cool way yeah. to introduce, you know, a larger spectrum of like alien type heroes to this new DCU. Just to quickly, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you a different one. I'll give you a different sure. one, really quick, because it just just came up in my head. A neo noir boots on the ground for for chapter two of our DC. Dan, Dan's <laughs> favorite word. Neo noir <laughs> boots on the ground. The question. Oh, the question. The question. The question. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. 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 And uh, maybe yeah. make it an HBO Max series. Probably yep. better as an HBO Max series. I agree. The question's dope. I've actually said that before on yeah. the pod. The question's great. Do you want me to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. I agree with the Martian Manhunter. Uh, the what, so I'm going to say a different one. What I want to do is I want to say, like, instead of something like The Authority, I would actually rather um, they would do, like, a Doom Patrol movie. Because I think if you want to throw in some B-level characters, why the fuck are you going to do an Authority movie? You know what I mean? The Doom Patrol show, I love the Doom Patrol show. It's getting canceled. That's neither here nor there. Probably not his decision or whatever. Um, but I think that's a nice, a cool corner of the DC universe to kind of uh, introduce along with everything. Because they mm -hmm. kind of exist on like the fringe of the universe. And I feel like it's those characters have a lot of depth that was explored in the TV show. But I just think that it would be great, instead of doing a fucking movie like The Authority... Like, do a Doom Patrol movie. Yeah. I was going to say I would like, like, an, uh, a magic uh, character, mm -hmm. right? Like, something like, a, uh, no, sorry, not Huntress, like Zatanna or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Mm. But Swamp Thing is kind of already our introduction into, like, the magic side of the universe, yep. right? Wonder Woman crosses over into that, and the Doom Patrol also crosses over into that. Yeah. So, yep. instead of something I would like to see, I kind of wanted to be like, hey, what I would like to see different about this slate is take out the 30, because no offense, no one cares. Mm hmm and then do like a Doom Patrol movie that already has an audience. The show is ending. Give us a great movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I would like, you know, I would also want to throw one thing out there that came to me. I understand why they didn't do it, but I think if the DC universe is going to be reset by the Flash in some kind of Flashpoint thing, I feel like you need a new Flash yeah. going forward yes. to tie that thread together. But again, I understand why in their minds maybe they shouldn't, they're not going to do it because, oh, we're not going to have a Flash movie in 2023 and then 2025 or whatever. But recast a Flash, like that's totally fine. If he goes to like the Speed Force, he comes out a different version. But, I, like, that's the best way to do it. You need that, I feel like you would need that connective thread since he's the one that's going to be 
yeah. resetting your universe. You know, yeah. you know what I'm trying to say? But at the same time, they did that in the new DCAU. So at the end of, I forget the movie specifically Is off the top of my head. Paradox? I don't know if it's Flashpoint Paradox or one of the newer ones, but the Flash is seen running across the water and then oh, it's yeah. a Flash and then we get the new DCAU and it started with that new Superman movie, I believe, and it went into like mm. the long Halloween. You're, you are thinking of Flashpoint Paradox. Mm. Yes. That, that kickstarted the brand new like yeah. animated movies. The brand new, the brand yeah. new ones. No, but there's, a, there's yeah. been a second reset though, I'm pretty sure. And it's after I think Apocalypse War. Or well, something. I, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't watch to that point. Okay, so there, there has been another reset, and it's up to they do a dark side war. I won't get into this like fully, but basically, um, they like Batman becomes like he's sitting on the, chair, the chair and shit yeah, like yeah, that. Okay, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Metron's so, chair. Metron's chair. So, oh, that was the dark side war. The dark side war. Yeah. So they did that, but then they get okay. out of it, and the Flash actually ends up like again doing another reset because everyone's like, okay, well, you know what to do. He runs, the flash, like a literal flash happens, and then now the entire DCAU is reset yeah. again, but with a different flash. Because mm. half know? the characters were like mangled and they dead. They just do <laughs> Wally. At this they point. just do Wally. Yeah, yeah. Just do, yeah, yeah. literally just yeah. do Wally. Which they can and technically Ezra still... Ezra was pretty much playing Wally. Exactly. But, yeah. you know... Yeah, uh, we won't get in. Well, okay, let's move on to Dan yeah. before we get on to this. I don't have like a particular one that's different. Like, I want, I want to see a Martian Manhunter... Uh, I, I would be. I'm very curious to see like the next iteration of Cyborg because you know the the story that we got in uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League was awesome. With Cyborg, I'd love to see more of the character. I think he was awesome. But as far as just like what I'm most invested in looking forward to, it's not even like DCU, but like I'm, I'm very heavily invested in the the Reeves Batman films. Yep. So like just as far mm. as like what I want to see from that movie, an Officer Martinez spin off. Yeah, Officer Martinez spin off. <laughs> so, but but um, what, me and Ben have talked about this a lot. But like I know it just got announced that it's just called the Batman Part Two, and that's it's coming out in twenty twenty five. But as far as like who the main big bad is, I think it would be really really cool to see uh, Mister Freeze yeah. make an appearance in in the, oh, yeah. the Reeves universe. Yep. I think it it's the itself. perfect time. You know, we got we, it's, it's like again be, uh, Ben and I have chatted about this, but it's like. Gotham's in shambles. It's flooded. We're going into winter. Like it would be, it would be the perfect time to introduce like a really cool ground. Hard of ice, baby. so sick. Yeah, yeah. considering it would uh, fit the last one we got was uh, the ice age. You know? It would fit perfectly <laughs> in that world, one thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, it's not the DCU, but I'm most invested in like excited for the next, the next Reach Batman. Yep. I and then that. yeah, I yeah. want to see Martian Manhunter. I want to see Cyborg at some point. Uh, and I'm curious to see, you know, it would almost be cool, like, to get, like, a, we won't get it, but I mean, like, we've talked about getting, like, a Batman Beyond in live action cool. would be, would be so cool. It won't yeah. happen. With Ben Affleck. Soon. <laughs> hey, Elseworlds. Elseworlds. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yo, call Glamo Del Toro, get a new God movie up, let's get that project restarted. <laughs> Fuck off. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, Rescott. That'd be sick. No, I'm, I'm That's sick. Um, no, I, listen, I think I would love to see all of that, but... Just to be a little bit different on this end, something that I truly would love to see would be, like, Cootie loves the boots on the ground. Because I feel like <laughs> for the past two to three years, there's just been massive CG battles at the end of every superhero movie. And I'm just, like, yeah. tired of it. So it's like, I, I know this was cut off the block, like, the, the Ben Affleck and Deathstroke um, mm. like mm. the the Arkham, the Arkham the, Asylum, yeah. like something yeah. like that. I know. Listen, it doesn't have to be the Snyder's guys. For all you people about to hate in the comments, I don't care if it's with those people. But like, give me that kind of dark story where it's just like brutal. Yeah, dark. Like, John Wick, but with Batman. Yeah, and Death <laughs> yeah but like you know, like warehouse type vibes. Yeah, yeah. Even like even like the Reeves movies too. Like that that fucking Batmobile scene is unmatched. Yeah. Yeah. Like something like that yeah. where it's like, hey, it took us it took us eight years to film this because we it took us like thirty days to film each side. It's like good. Like I want to see that, and I want to see like the Black Panthers and the Shazams and the Rocks, and it's like, oh, you know, uh, Samak comes out of the fucking ground. It's like, who is that? Where did he come from? Like, you know what I mean? Like, give me. It's like, boom. I want like. I want something like that where it's very just like, hey, it's two guys like fighting for what they believe in, and yep. that like, one yeah. three millisecond shot we get in BBS of the security footage of Batman with the white eyes yeah. swooping yeah. down yeah. and picking the guy. Yeah, yeah. Like, give me like an that. entire movie of that. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> yeah. hopefully, yeah. that's the brave and the bold. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Right. yeah. Because, okay, sure, uh, yes, because Damian Wayne is a fucking assassin. Yeah. Okay. Literally. Then yes, like, I then I. I, I 
Another then I'm movie. hoping that that movie goes down that path at some point, or at least explores it. With Absolutely. We haven't seen Batman be an assassin yet. Like, we've seen Detective now with Reeves. The, we've seen Elbows, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, we, yeah. yeah, I agree. So, Let, so let's do let's do some, like, assassin kind yeah, of Yeah, I agree. That would be cool. But, Give me a new yeah. Doctor Fate movie, for fuck's sake. That yeah, character, I mean, that character was that butchered in that fucking movie. <laughs> Give me a JSA with, with Jay Garrick. Yes! You know, like, or, uh, no, let's go. Or Alan yeah, Scott. Alan Scott. Like, Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. What's up? No, know? give me like, the atom. We're... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, we got the atom and the cyclone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, I just love watching Alex's passion just <laughs> spike at a red. I'm <laughs> sorry, but as soon as you mentioned Black Adam, like PTSD came. That movie was a fucking pile of garbage. <laughs> that movie was fucking oh, so please. fucking bad. Wow. Okay. Um, before we get too carried away, yeah. my last thing I want to talk about because I wanted of all people's opinions, I wanted to get your opinion on them connecting the games to the movies. Yes. Mm. Yes. Because to me, this is a nightmare waiting to happen. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Because we all know that like some games, you know, do not get paid enough attention to, especially this day and age because of all this fucking controversy happening with seemingly every studio that yeah. makes a game. <laughs> every game that ever comes out. Yeah. So I'm just scared of like development hell if they're like really, really trying to go like hard and tr like connect a triple A game to a movie and it bombs. I mean, think, I think when you look at specifically the only other uh, sort of similar instance where James Gunn's going to try and do something different with this whole shared universe thing is that um, the Creature Commandos, right? He said... Some of these characters might pop up in live action, but I think it's one of those things. It's like risk free, you know. If Creature Commandos doesn't really work out, no, okay, we don't need the Creature Commandos in the mainline movies. If it works out, if it's a big hit, let's find a way to get these characters like woven into the larger DCU. Will it still exist within the parameters of this connected universe? Yes, and I think that's the same thing that's going to happen with the games, and I hope that James Gunn is smart enough to know that games are not like movies <laughs> um, and games aren't even like animated movies, like what they're going to probably do with this Creature Commandos. It, you cannot crank them out in two years unless you're making very small games like borderline double-A, maybe even indie games. Like Telltale style cool. games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if if the plan is to make something like I don't know if you guys saw recently that game for Xbox, um, Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like really small, like six-hour game, like super fun, hyper stylized. Like if they want to do something like that, then you probably have the ability to do that. You know, you probably have the chance to take something akin to a Creature Commandos, a smaller character, a lesser-known character, make a game about them, and if it hits, if people like it enough. Say, okay, let's find a way to get that actor, to get that character, and put them into live action. You know, because there's been rumors as well that, uh, that Cal, Cal Kestis, is that, is that the name? Yeah. From Jedi Fallen Order is potentially going to show up in one of these Disney Plus shows. Maybe he's going to show up in The Mandalorian Season 3. I don't know if, what the validity is of those rumors. I mean, you guys know Star Wars more than me. But I know that for fans, they're going to see that happen and be, be like, oh, that's cool. But for somebody who may not know, we'll be like, well, who's this guy? Let me search up. Oh, he's got a whole game about him. Let me try that out. Let me learn about this guy. And I think that's what they're hoping to get out of the whole game side of things is like have it be fun for people who already play games and potentially introduce people who wouldn't play the games otherwise into trying something like trying a new medium, essentially. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I don't think any of the big characters like like that Wonder Woman game is still coming. Right, it's 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 happening. Monoliths behind it, like people do not realize how good that game is probably going to end up being. Um, but it's highly doubtful that that's going to be the Wonder Woman that will be in live action for the DCU. Um, and they can totally make a Superman game that's open world that has all like the bells and whistles of a AAA game, and it's just. It's just a Superman game that that's its own thing. For sure. You know? And I mean, now that they've come out and they've said, you know what, we're going to call properties that are outside of mainline continuity Elseworlds, then they could probably even tack that yeah, onto the games understand. now as well. Just a little fucking They, they got to get a logo going fast. Yeah, yeah. 100%. They got to attach that 100%. shit like everything yeah. and, so that people know what brand it is, like yes. what they're getting into. And I'm glad yeah. they finally did that too by the way because like i've been saying that for years i'm like yeah. please start slapping like dc black label or elseworlds on these other properties so that 
you know, it's not even just for the people that don't know, you know, what's going on with these universes. It's also like just a nice little nod to like us as actual fans being yeah. like, hey, we understand like here's our main universe. Here's the side stories. And now you can get your own little stamp on it. Like I just still I cannot get on board if they're going to try and convince me that Waller or Aquaman three, if there's going to be one, is that Elseworlds thing? Because like, yeah, yeah, they, they come from an are like a universe that they already tried to build. And it would just be too, like, it would be too confusing. And it would be, for me at least, pissing off that they would have the audacity to bring back anyone from Suicide Squad would be like, we're not firing Henry Cavill, we're just not hiring him. You know? And I'm not even saying, okay, listen, if you don't want to make another Henry Cavill Superman movie, fine. Fine, James Gunn. Okay, fine. <laughs> but he, he can't even pop up in anything else. Like, we... We can't even just have more Henry Cavill Superman in something. Like, I don't know. I don't know, man. Because apparently his cameo was cut from the Flash movie now. And it's like, why? For for what reason? If that movie's supposed to hit the reset button, you, you can't just give me a little more? And it, 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 if we're going to have four Batmans all it will do, like three years. All, all it will do is make them more money because it'll drive hype. Just like how... Bro, the only reason exactly. why I went to go watch Black Adam was to see Henry Cavill at the end. Like, that's it. That's it's true. true. Like, it's true. oh my god. Um, can that's I ask... the only reason we were blinded to think it was kind of good. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask... I, I just want to ask you also one question, because I want to get your, your personal thoughts on this. Because this is something I've been feeling for a while, but by the time... DC actually gets rolling with everything in like their first phase. I want to ask you your opinion. By the time, you know, five years from now, whatever, do you think superhero films are really going to be pulling the numbers like they are right now? Because what I think is we're entering a stage of superhero fatigue to the general audiences. Because, I mean, Marvel's been going for, I don't know, like 10 plus years at this point, right? Mm -hmm. they're trying to recoup money for what they lost and they're trying to compete with Marvel, blah, 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 boom. But I mean, like, you know, everything in Hollywood kind of works in a cyclical nature. So by the time that they actually get their universe footing, do you think that they're really going to be seeing the returns on these movies that they are expecting? And if not, how is that going to affect how the movies are going to be going forward? Because I think they're just going to get caught in the same loop that they did in 2016, personally. What do you think? Um... I think like obviously that's an interesting point, but I also feel like people have been talking about like superhero fatigue for the last like five or six years. Like I, I've been hearing that terminology used for a long time now. And it's one of those things for me where it's like if the stories are good, like people, general audience, like your your moms, your dads, your uncles, they when they go to the movies, they're not planning to go see and this is unfortunate, but they're not planning to go see like everything everywhere all at once you know they're not planning to go see the whale when they go to the movies they they want to just go see the blockbusters they're going to go see avatar they're going to go see the new spider-man and they're going to go see the next iron man right so like if the movies are really good if they build that brand trust if people start to get involved in dc again and get hyped for dc again then the movies are just going to continue to make money you know like when the next avengers movie comes out it's going to make over a billion dollars and, and I know that that's simply off of the title alone, but it's also just because when people go to the theaters, they want the big blockbuster action movies, you know, and that's just how it is at the end of the day. Um, and so as long as they still exist, that's what people are going to be looking for. And it's like you that's said, fair. the title pulls in the audience itself. Like, you'll, as soon as you slap Batman and Superman on a title, that, those, those yep. big heavy hitters, the two most iconic characters of all time. 100%. They're and always going to pull in on you. Where, where you might not see the success and, like, then, like, you know, like the, the, the one-offs, like the stranger character, like the more, like, deep cuts. Those ones might take yeah. a little bit of a Those ones will take a while. I, like, I like Wonder Woman, cool. Batman, Superman will always pull in Yeah, an, an audience, and, and right? what people don't, yeah. and what people tend to forget, too, is, like, you know, as Snyder fanboyish as we are, it's like, we, we just love the characters. We want to see good movies. And you're absolutely right. Just slapping those names on a movie alone will make it a ton of money. That doesn't like, make it a good B movie. Exactly. It'll, it'll so BVS Theatrical Cut was a very, very divisive movie. But it still made almost $900 million. Being yeah. a bombed critical failure, pretty yeah. much. It still made almost a billion dollars. 
Yeah. So like that's just by throwing a name at it. So now make it a quote unquote good movie, and fucking throw those characters in, and and there you go. You're you're laughing, right? I don't think so, you can exactly. make a better movie than BVS. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, the, honestly, the thing I, is, if if BVS was extremely well received critically, like if that was it was pumping like a ninety yeah. percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and everyone was like, "Yo, this is actually incredible." Like if everyone saw the light like we here have mm -hmm. with yeah. the Ultimate Edition, you know, then then. Even the theatrical cut of Justice League, which is horrid, yeah. would have made a ton of money. It's because of BVS getting bombed um, critically, which yeah. it should have made a billion dollars. Like it should have. We'd be sure. on a different timeline. Um, but because it was, <laughs> because it was kind of hated on, because people didn't didn't see the light, because we are our truth seekers, unlike several people out there. You know, we are <laughs> Snyder believers, <laughs> unlike several people out there. Um, they they didn't go see the theatrical cut of Justice League, regardless of like whether it was good or bad. And and weirdly enough, that was getting better reviews than BVS was at the time. <laughs> yeah, which is so people, fucking people weird. were checked out. And since then, it's like they've been fighting up to be like, guys, trust us. DC is still cool as shit, man. And they got lucky with Aquaman. Like Aquaman was a good popcorn flick, you know. R regardless of it has some corny writing. Um, that pitbull and song questionable was good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the costumes look sick, the action's pretty sweet, and it's just a good shove popcorn in your face until you choke on the kernels kind of movie. Like it's it, and it works <laughs> for that reason, you know. Yeah, and let's not forget too that BVS suffered from the early Rotten Tomatoes scores. Yeah, which uh, I can't remember the name of the company that's a major. Uh, shareholder of that website uh, but what, uh, whoever it was they were, they were trying to promote civil war so I'm just going to leave it at that um, <laughs> it's, it's real though it's true like, <laughs> that was an actual conspiracy back in the day but it's not a conspiracy <laughs> <laughs> no, like, insert tinfoil hat <laughs> no like I, uh, on, honestly like I, I hope uh, I, like <laughs> I hope I hope that's the case honestly because I love these characters at the end of the day i love these properties um i've always been a dc guy more than a marvel guy i'm not sure if anyone's been able to tell uh <laughs> but i really do hope that they do succeed and make good movies make a lot of money because like i already know like superman hopefully it gets a billion Author the authority is going to make a billion we already know that <laughs> um, oh yeah everything else <laughs> yeah you know it's the authority that, sweep yeah. you know <laughs> Those those handfuls and handfuls of people that see it are just gonna oh, man. throw Renting money at it. The, the yeah. tens and twenties of fans around <laughs> the block, your local neighborhood, yeah, literally, are going crazy. Crazy. Yeah. literally, twenty people on Earth are really excited to see a live action Midnighter, bro. <laughs> really excited to see a live action Midnighter. Woo! Oh, I shit. I think that is a perfect place to wrap this up. We'll be talking so for yeah. hours. Um, yeah. I just want to thank you for coming on so last minute and uh, venting. You're welcome. You know, Aaron's been a buddy for quite some time now. We yeah. called him up and he's like, dude, let's talk about this bullshit. <laughs> so uh, yeah. here we are. Uh, let us know what you guys thought in the comments. Go check out our boy Aaron Caboose on YouTube as well. He has a great channel. He does a lot of uh, breakdowns, gameplay, shit, reactions, just... He's literally the best. So check him out. And uh, yeah, we will we'll see y'all next time.